Hello, this is DIY Reptiles, and today I'm going to be upgrading my red runner roach colony into a larger enclosure here. So my red runner roach colony has been doing very well, and there are tons of babies now. And the ones that I bought are now mostly adults, so I'm thinking that they need a bigger area than this. I've had this colony for, I want to say like four months maybe, I think and I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade them. So I have this enclosure. This was my very original Dubu Roach enclosure. Now I have two Dubu Roach enclosures. I actually just did a video on upgrading to two. So I basically split the colony in half and those are those two. And then I have the Madagascar Houston cockroaches. And then there's these guys. So since these guys are breeding so well, I'm gonna go ahead and update them, upgrade them. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this, dump it in there, add some more food and stuff. So uh, there's already holes in the top. I don't like these holes because they're very large. And that's why I was explaining that this was a Dubu Roach colony at first. That's when I drilled all these. So I did that for the, the Dubu Roaches, but these guys' babies are way smaller. So I just need to make sure that they don't, the the egg crate doesn't stack all the way up because the babies can definitely get through here. But if I had mesh, then I would do the same thing as this and I've just cut out this whole area and then go ahead and put mesh there. But I don't, I don't think I have any. I don't, I certainly don't have this, but I don't think I, I could easily get any other mesh. So I'm just gonna go ahead and move on. Not super worried about it. And then I have another piece of egg crate. I honestly haven't changed out these guys' egg crate. I don't really want to mess with them that way because <laughs> they're really fast. And since this is such a small enclosure, I just feel like I'd lose a bunch if I did that. And yeah, sometimes if I if I have this thing open for too long, generally an adult male will escape somehow and I'll have to grab them. But they're very fast and they're very small. So I'm going to upgrade them. And then I will, I'll place them, they, this enclosure doesn't fit into this slot, but I can place it up there. But for now, I'm just gonna place it right here because this ceramic heat emitter is like always on for my crest gecko because I have it like a basking system. And if I just leave it right here, it gets really warm right there. So I think that they will do all right there besides the fact that it will be a little bit light there. But eventually, like I said, I'll be able to, I'll be able to put them there and then I hope to one day have a a red runner roach colony that's a big enough to be in one of those so then I can have like the dubu roach colonies I'm hoping that I could fit like four of those things so like three dubu roach colony colonies and then the red runner roach colony and then I think I'll just get more containers like this if I need to expand those guys or I might even do a terrarium for those don't really know yet but I think that that would be very, very cool to have just tons of roaches. And that way I can not worry about getting like a leopard gecko or something. I don't know. It's not, I'm not super interested in getting a ton of animals right now, but I can, I can just not worry. And I have the bearded dragon. So I guess the goal is to be able to feed the bearded dragon as like much dewy roaches as at once and not even worry about it affecting my colonies. So, I mean, roaches, not necessarily dewy roaches, but all the, the variety of roaches without having to worry about it. So that's the plan and little steps for now, this enclosure to that one. So as I had said, this is gonna be a pretty simple move because I don't like to, <laughs> mess with these guys all that often. I am not gonna try to do a whole lot other than just dumping it. So I'm going to remove their egg crates and there are a ton of adults here. And then I'm gonna dump this stuff in the corner here. Get all that. And then there is the there's obviously the red runner roaches in here, and then I think there are the buffalo beetles. So I didn't actually add any buffalo beetles in here, but somehow I saw one the other day, and I'm not surprised about that because these guys came with buffalo beetles, but what I did is I, I realized that, and then I, 
I caught them all out of the container that these guys came in and I put them in with my doobie roaches because I figured my doobie roaches need them more than these guys. So it's probably a good thing that there are probably uh, some of those and there's so many in the doobie roach enclosure now, I'll probably go ahead and move them into here. Oh geez. As you can see, the males sometimes like to fly. <laughs> you can see the wings, they don't like fly all the time, but they fly certainly more than I've ever seen doobie roaches do it. So that's something to watch out for. <laughs> but here you can see the food that I'm feeding them. I have the, I have rolled oats, and then I have Missouri tortoise diet. These guys don't seem to like it as much as the doobie roaches do. But that's just one of the, I guess it's kind of a weird thing that I feed them. I don't know. I think it makes sense to me because I am feeding these guys to reptiles. And I mean, that's a reptile diet. So then I have aquatic turtle food as well for more protein and stuff for them. So I'm going to break this up real quick. And then I'll place this one in there too. So then they have more surface area and stuff. But I want to be able to feed, like I like having an open area, so I'm going to break these in half so then I can have that open food area. And the, the reason I really like an open food area is because sometimes I feed foods that go bad. Um, one is bell peppers. Bell peppers are not the best food to feed brooches. Trust me, it doesn't smell good at all. So I feed these guys and I feed all the roaches just whatever I feed the green iguana and the bearded dragon. So I end up feeding these guys lots of different types of vegetables and sometimes it isn't the best thing. So I think I'll put it somewhere like that. But these guys are doing well, they're breeding, but I don't really feed them to anybody because they're so small like I don't I'd have to feed if I fed them to the bearded dragon then I'd have to feed adults and they're really hard to catch and then if I wanted to I've tried to feed them to Beth my leopard gecko but she doesn't seem very interested in these guys which isn't very surprising actually I'm gonna add some of this I haven't actually tried them with the the, the zoo med turtle diet so we'll see if they like that Actually, here, wait, I'm kind of doing this wrong here. I need to flip it around. There we go. Normally I have the food in the front, so I don't know what I was thinking there. I don't, I guess I've had the food in the back in this enclosure. Huh, weird. But here we have, we'll have the, the wet food area and the dry food area. And then we'll see if they like that, the turtle food. They don't seem thrilled with the the tortoise food, but that's all right. They, they can, they don't actually seem to eat the oats very much either. Like I never have to replace the oats, but they could very well be eating those things. And I'm just not noticing cause that's so, they're so tiny. Like they're just crazy. After you've dealt with like doobie roaches for so long and now I'm dealing with the Madagascar hissing cockroaches as well. These guys just seem like so, so small. So there we have it. These roaches are now expanded into a bigger enclosure. I think that's pretty cool. And I will save this enclosure for other things. But now I have a bigger red runner roach colony, or I mean the colony is the same size, but the, the actual enclosure is bigger at least. Video is probably not the most interesting, but I hope you guys got something out of it. I don't exactly keep like perfect track of the temperature and humidity and I'm kind of just kind of doing it when it comes to uh, breeding these guys. Like I, I just kind of keeping them warm and hoping that it'll work. So that might be why my Madagascar hissing cockroaches aren't breeding because I'm not. I'm just. I mean, it's warm in here. It feels warm to me. So that sounds. That seems right. And it's working for these guys. It's working for the Dubia roaches. And I'm hoping that eventually it'll work for these. So. That's how to, I mean, this is the basic setup of uh, these colonies. So I just upgraded it. So I hope you guys enjoyed and got something out of this. 
If you did, like down below. If you have any comments or concerns, leave comments below. And if you want more content, then subscribe. Have a fantastic day.